Mm-hmm. All right. This is a subject we've needed to broach for a long time. Um, those, obviously, people who are in the squad who are a part of this discussion, um, those who will hear this afterwards via podcast, we do this on the live stream. So to go in depth with Pat Mack on any subject, the best way to do that is in the Keep the Blaze Alive coaching squad. But the other day, Mac, um, and to give some perspective, I'm looking mm-hmm. here at some of the statistics of your Instagram account and the, yep. the popularity of particular posts. I know that you know this, um, mm-hmm. but I'm looking now at what we posted just a few days ago, right? Two or three days yep. ago. And yep, about three days ago. This was a video that you had given me, so we the, mm-hmm. because I'm handling a lot of stuff to for invader coffee and um you and i both participate with invader at this level and um you'd sent me some video just talk when you first told me about it you said i'm just gonna say it's gonna be a good today's day. gonna be a good day today's gonna be that's all you were gonna do you were gonna not yep. mention anything else correct you decided later to discuss the what you haven't discussed really publicly which is the condition that you have which we'll break down here in just a second Mm -hmm. but that video now of course it was it was you know i edited that video and put all the music and these other things to kind of really put some emotion behind it because you're not bluffing about any of this this is not a put on this is we know those of us who know you this is really how you feel about this and this is really what you contend with but that video now has over three hundred and ten thousand views and mm-hmm. one of the, I think the only other one that's even comparable is just a one that was a clip from Joe Rogan uh, yep. some time back. But I, if I don't think the Rogan one is that much more, right? Yeah. So, but the, also, what was interesting though, it's not so much you, your videos get a lot of you know views, but what was interesting on this one is the amount of comments on yes, it. Yes, correct. Yeah, which, which highlighted just how many people are in similar sorts of conditions. Mm -hmm. Yep. So why don't you take us back to... And before I even take you back, see, uh, um, when I was even at my worst, I did not want to go full disclosure with this on the interwebs because to me, it's not the platform for a pity party. And I do not want, nor did I want, a, a pity party. So now that I'm... I'm feeling better. I mean, I still have it, you know, but I'm not in anguish. I'm not in misery. You know, it's not horrible. I figured, well, this might be a good time to talk about it because uh, the little bits that I did disclose on another podcast, that there was a a massive outreach of people who were, they didn't have advice. They wanted to know more about it because they had similar ailment or condition. Right. And um, they were so grateful that I talked about it. So uh, I figured, what the heck? It's a great time to do it uh, because of the way that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it, which can help a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of other people out e- e- with even similar ailments or just age itself, you know, right. just, uh, just any kind of chronic pain. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was a good time to do it. And, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to, to chit chat about this. Uh, this started for me before I talk about what it was, uh, in, in the middle of May of 21, I was on the range and for those, I mean, I think most people know that I have an abundance of energy. I am very fit. I take care of myself. I watch my diet. Now I party, right? I got a bourbon right here. I do tobacco, tobacco, you know, I, I mean, I like to live life. I'm not going to squelch that. I'm not going to stop living life um, because I'm not crazy about any of the things. I'm not, I I don't go overboard with stuff. Um, um, But in May of 2021 uh, on the range, uh, I just noticed that I didn't feel well. and, and, And I was demonstrating something for these soldiers I was training and I couldn't like find myself into the rice paddy prone with comfort. Mm. My hamstrings were really tight. And I had Dutch and Rick Hogg on the range with me. And, you know, in typical fashion, they were making fun of me, just, you know, Mm. old man shit. And I was like, nah, this is different, man. This is Mm. like, my hamstrings are tight. And then it just, it got progressively, it started immediately. It was one day I felt great. The next day 
hamstrings tight. And then it progressively got worse where hamstrings tight to hips to hip flexors. Uh, and so I started hitting people up about different stretching routines, you know, really fit guys who are into it, who know me and know, all right, you're not just blowing smoke up our asses. There's something wrong. So let's get this fixed. So, you know, I started doing different because we thought it could be muscular imbalance or something like that. Who knows, you know, the type of shoes you're wearing, um, how you're working out, what your recovery is, how much water you intake, uh, all that stuff. Uh, but um, it got progressively worse in a hurry to the point where just three, four weeks in, Rebecca knew it was bad because I called the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, dude, this is bad. I'm in a dark room by myself with a cell phone calling. I don't even know how to make a doctor's appointment, you right. know? Um, so she knew it was, she knew that that it was that it was bad if i am calling the doctor now she had been watching me struggle uh progressively like putting my clothes on you know getting out of bed just getting out of bed and putting my clothes on she was like dude this is this is bad it would take me 15 minutes this is and this is like just a month in it would take me about 15 minutes to get get dressed and i couldn't reach my feet to put socks on and then once once i got um dressed i would need a rest i would need to sit down in a recliner and take a rest i was just exhausted from it um but the docs you know in in typical doc fashion they were just a handful of pills a shot in the ass that kind of thing and clear up immediately um uh but as the summer went it got bad 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 uh and then I started knowing, noticing other stuff like uh, low tolerance to heat. And I had courses in the summer, you know, mm-hmm. I had two in July, two in yeah. August. And those, I felt like, I, like, dude, I'm going to freaking keel over dead. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keel over dead here. Um, <clears throat> and along with the, with this pain, this, cause it was debilitating. Um, when I did make the appointment for the doctor, I could barely drive myself to the hospital. I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't get into the car freely. I had to struggle to get into the car. And then I couldn't put my hands on the steering wheel. I couldn't lift my arms. And then I couldn't grip the steering wheel. And I'm like, damn, man, this sucks bad. Now, but I'm just that, thinking, this is, were, you, were you just not able to move the muscle? Or was it was just because of the pain? No, uh, the, 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 the pain definitely blocked it. But as hard as I could grip it, you know, when I'm saying, screw this, it's just pain. Right. And I tried gripping. There was no strength there. There was okay. nothing. There was no strength whatsoever. My, it, it, They just refused to work. My body refused to work. Uh, um, the, um, I'm trying to put this into like chronicolo- right. chronological order. And I've got some notes here. So started more advanced static stretching and evaluate diet and supplements. Pain got worse through May. Hamstrings began tight and called because I did. I, I started taking notes on it immediately. Right. And sure. there was a lot of self-diagnosis, a lot of research on the interwebs. My third time back to the doc, he made me appointment for a, a rheumatologist. Mm-hmm because they thought this could be some kind of arthritis. And during one of my research uh, phases, when I was just, I just plugged in all, all of the symptoms. Right. So tight hamstrings, sore knees, sore hips, uh, lack of mobility, um, pain up the spine, back of the neck, back of the shoulders, na- nauseous, exhaustion, shortness of breath, uh, loss of appetite, all this stuff. I just plugged it in. And what came up after me researching now for about two months um, was this thing called PMR, polymyalgia rheumatica. And I read the symptoms and I went, holy crap, this is everything that I have right here. Mm. So I took that information into the doc and I said, hey, doc, I think this is what I have. It's called, uh, and I didn't even know how to pronounce it. I said, right. PMR, polymyalgia rheumatica. And he said, yes, that's what we're thinking too. Sent me over to the rheumatologist. The rheumatologist said, I think so too, but you don't fit the bill, bro. You're not right. a 65-year-old obese woman. You know, that kind right. of thing. Right. Now, it is, uh, you know, I am, I do fall in the age bracket, right? Over 50, uh, but I'm not overweight and I'm not out of shape. Those are two. Right you know, two that were in there. Uh, but he said, that's what we're going to start treating you for. 
So the treatment, of course, was prednisone, you know, prednisone, mm -hmm. high doses of prednisone. So I went on that for, uh, we'll just say right now, a long time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because it was squelching, you know, yeah. the pain. Uh, it, it did, it did not alleviate it. And, um, and I wasn't taking as much as what he, he asked me to, I was basically yeah. splitting the dosage in half, right. uh, because I figured, um, I don't want all this poison in my body, yes. uh, but damn, it's making me feel good. So, you know, desperate times like that sure. provide fertile ground for doing for, uh, desperate measures, you know, right. I'll do anything to make me feel better, anything, right. whatever it takes. So give me these drugs and those drugs and whatever it takes. Uh, and it, nothing was freaking working, man. It was squelching the pain a little bit, but nothing really worked. Um, it was well, about six, seven months in or so. Um, I had already lost, uh, 15 pounds, bro. So yeah. that's 195. My fighting weight is 210. Yeah. So uh, my legs are starting to atrophy because I'm not working out at the right. same pace. I couldn't do it now, but I think I need to talk about that real quick too. Um, because that was my saving grace. I yes. mean, I, I hated, I hated Rebecca suffering through this. Right. I, I, it bothered me that she suffered through watching me suffer. Yeah. Um, so there was a, I learned a couple months in how to, to fake it you know, how to stand up straight and try to not wince, you know, or moan and groan because I had to moan and groan. Now, I'll keep in mind too, that I am no stranger to pain. Sure. You know, I, I mean, I've had four reconstructive surgeries, 13 broken bones, TBI, concussion. Um, so when I would go to the docs, cause I was going to the docs a lot, there was a pain chart up on the wall from one to 10, one with a smiley face and 10, a guy crying. Now I know I've, I've never had 10, like a gunshot or missing a limb or something like that, mm -hmm. but I've been pretty close, you know, to, um, a lot of my injuries, uh, provoked vomiting, you yeah. know, when it's that much pain, when you go into shock, like sure. toe jumper, break, split an ACL in half, uh, tib fib, those kind of things, you know, that's, that's the type of pain where you're, you're, vom you're you vomit, you vomit right. because it's that much pain. So I, I would always laugh at her chart. I said, well, I, I know that a lot of people come in here and tell you that they have a number 10 pain yeah. because they, uh, they sprained an ankle. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be fair and say, I know what pain is, but damn, this is a seven all the way. Yeah. This is, I mean, it was that bad for me. Mm -hmm. That pain was, it was, it was seven. Uh, whew, just thinking about it, man. Um, so, uh, this working out is a way of life for me. It's a part of what I do. And I was not going to stop this. And which brings me to another point. I'm so grateful for my fan base because I knew they were counting on me to put stuff out and I wasn't yeah. going to flat deck it and say, well, I'm not going to put out today's daily workout for combat strength training. Right. Now the struggle became very, very real, you know, continuing to work out. Mm. Um, because this thing this thing that I had, this PM that, that I have, this PMR tells you, don't do anything. Sit on that recliner. Don't do anything. You're good. Just sit out, just relax. Mm -hmm. And that's what, so it wants you to capitulate to it. And when you look it up online, Re Rebecca would get so bummed out. She goes, all right, what do we do with PMR? And it would say, sit in the recliner, use a walker, mm -hmm. these kind of things. And it would be so depressing for her because you know, what if this is me for the rest of my life? This yeah. just nauseating freaking pain. I am working at what, what was I telling you back then that I was working at about maybe 25 or 30% capacity. Yeah. About that. And yeah. that's gritting through it. That's reaching down deep. I want to get 30% out of m my normal Pat Max self today. Yeah. And I would achieve that and I would be absolutely wiped out by 5 p.m. I'm done, man, with everything. I had like, there were like three magic hours during the day. I could finally move around two, mm -hmm. you know, pretty mm -hmm. good. And then by five, I'm smoked. I'm wiped out. Um, uh, 
Now, regarding so the workouts, the, uh, though, you what's also not mm-hmm. known is like people would see the clips and they see yep. what seems to be and what seems to be the normal Mac, right? That's why right. people are surprised at the video. But mm-hmm. how long did it take you? Yeah, to, so to, to start a workout. Right. Now, back to the uh, well, the post that I I still kept posting stuff. Some people did notice though. They were like, "Hey, bro, you." are you're uh, losing muscularity or yeah. dude, you're, you're, are you getting weaker? Are you p- purposely holding back right. on uh, lifting heavy stuff? So some, some people did notice it now. So th- then I started the process and I think it was about like five, four or five months in, it became very personal to me because yeah. I would, I would capitulate to the recliner. And then I would say, nope, I'm getting up. And it would take, it was a struggle getting out of the recliner. And then I gave it a name. I made it personal. It yeah. became personal. I gave it a name. I said, this is my demon. Mm-hmm. And it, dude, I'm, I'm getting emotional right now thinking mm-hmm. about it. Because I haven't, I haven't addressed this. I haven't gone right. back to these days yet. And I said, I'm, I'm giving this thing a name. It's my demon. And you want to fight? All right, motherfucker. I'll, I'll, I'll fight you. Mm-hmm. Um. So it was a, the, the, the daily struggle. I would, I would, I would really cash in on my um, discipline with the whiteboard because mm-hmm. I would write my workout for the next day every night. So I would look at that in the morning um, because what I noticed when I did work out, you know, I would feel better. I would be able to push through the rest of the day, push through the rest of the day. So the, uh, the first, the first, the first step you know, of, of working out, I would dress the part. That's when I started wearing the headband, headband you know? Yes, that's right. Yep. That's when I started wearing like the, mm-hmm. the Rambo headband. I was like, I'm, I'm dressing the part, man. Yeah. I'm going to dress the part and I just have to make it to my driveway and just making it there. Yeah. Just walking out of the house, you know, sucked bad. Next step, crank on the metal. Mm-hmm. And then I would just sit in the chair and I would drink a, uh, like a kill cliff or whatever, drink an energy drink. And, uh, and I'd start planning it and say, what is today? Today is power day. Nothing's working. I can't lift my arms above my head. Hmm. You know, I can't bend. I can't, the furthest I could bend down is to my knees, you know, no more yeah. touching toes at that point. It was like to the knees. Yeah. To the knees, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would sit there and listen to listen to the metal um and try to plan something and then the the arduous work started where you have to pick something up and you have to warm up and uh, and this was for me it was like five pounds one hand to the other 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 until the shoulders started working and here's another thing that i learned um that i discovered and i invented uh, about, about the same time, four or five months, I have to break the, the pain threshold. Mm. I have to break the, the, yeah. the, the pain barrier because the pain was just excruciating, like, for, like pull-ups. I'm a pull-up master, mm-hmm. but now not being able to reach the pull-up bar, you know, reach it, just reach the pull-up yeah. bar. Just reach it. And then, and then I would hang, you know, for like a second hang, just dead hang. And I would reach it again, hang for two seconds, reach it again, hang for five seconds, and then reach it again, hang for 10 and do a quarter of a pull-up, reach it again, hang, do a half of a pull-up. And this would go on. The warm-ups were about a half an hour about that. Just, just being able to grip something. Right. So about a half an hour for each warm-up. Um, I started doing some alternative stuff too during then, like, uh, the mountain bike saved my ass uh, because low impact and sure. uh, and I didn't need a lot of flexibility for that. Mm-hmm. So I live on a cul-de-sac. It's about a quarter mile. So I could uh, roll it to the uh, roll down to the bottom of the cul-de-sac and ride up, roll down, ride up, roll down, ride up. Um, so this this was the process every day, the process every day. And, and, that, and I started doing seven days a week. At that point where I'm usually five days a week. Yeah. And now granted, they were minuscule. They were little. So what the people saw when I was posting workouts in 21 and 22, they were seeing my absolute best, best performance, my absolute best. This is the one I'm going to put on film. 
And I was faking the hell out of that. I swear <laughs> to God. I was faking the hell out of it. If you go, like every once in a while, I'll flip back and I'll go, oh my God, I remember how I felt. Mm -hmm. I remember how bad this was at this point. This sucked bad. Um, well, faking it in the sense that you weren't showing the pain. You were doing right. the activity. Yep. <laughs> there, right. you know, I wasn't another, showing the pain. I wasn't. There was, there was a couple about where I winced and I'm looking at it. I go, ah, they're not going to know. They're just thinking I'm, I'm, you know, that I'm grimacing, uh, whatever, wincing yeah. because you're grimacing because the workout's good. They're right. not going to know. Nobody's going to notice this. Uh, so, and the other thing was the skier. So low impact and I could mm -hmm. like work the shoulders because I, I, <laughs> So the pain in the shoulders is bad. Like a t-shirt, you can't take a t-shirt on and off. You huh. can't. You can't do it. It's not possible. And then dexterity in the, the fingers, you couldn't right. button a button-up shirt. So Rebecca had to dress me a lot of times. Um, the um, I'm going to go back to the notes here and yeah, see please. what I got. Like the pain feels. Oh, that's another. One. That this is the this is how I described it. I said when because I would tell a small group of people because they would people would know me. You know, people right. know me, and they'll go, "What's wrong with you? Why are you limping?" Or did you hurt yeah. yourself? So in confidence, like guys at the pub and stuff, I said, nah, man, I got this bullshit disease called polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, but I would explain, they said, what's the pain feel like? Is it sharp? I said, dude, this, so this is a disease that attacks everything. So it's muscles, joints, bones. So poly many myalgia muscles, uh, rheumatica joints, bones. Mm -hmm. So it attack everything hurts everything all the time and every day was a new surprise what's going to hurt, hurt today, worse yeah. today what's going to be the most painful and i would report it to rebecca i would report i said yeah it's a hippie day it, it's a hippie day mm -hmm. you know or it's it's a real bad shoulders and neck it would go from my jawline all the way down to the to the bridges of my feet right. all the way jawline sometimes my teeth hurt <laughs> and then the headache in the back of the head uh sometime frontal lobes um and then i had uh kind of a uh, uh, a pain um, check-in with Rebecca. She, it, it, I, I, I hated that she asked me. I hated it, you know, because yeah. she didn't want to know the answer. Because she, she, she would know. She would know if it was horrible. She would know. So she didn't ask. When she saw me get out of bed and get yeah. dressed, she'd know that it was horrible. But on days that I was getting dressed a little easier, she'd say, how do you feel today? I said, you know what? I don't feel horrible. I don't feel horrible, just bad. Just yeah. everything feels really, really bad, but I don't feel horrible. Right. And she'd be elated, just elated. Um, so uh, I'm still on the prednisone at this point. And then about six months into it, he changed up my meds and I was on both uh, prednisone, zofosilazine and hydroxychloroquine. Uh, you know, and, and, and th yeah, they all squelched it to some degree but nothing stopped it nothing right. stopped it at all right. so the workout was my saving grace now diet continue to be my good diet. i've always eaten well so yeah. with the with the you know the 500 unsolicited comments when we posted this <laughs> uh there was so much redundancy there right you're like nobody read anybody no, else's, anybody else's comment. comment yeah yeah now i'm gonna when we culminate this when we culminate i'm gonna culminate by saying two things that nobody said nobody and that i think helped me out the most great so you got to stand by for this folks with freaking <laughs> <Stay> information <tuned. laughs> yeah you got to stay tuned because out of all of those freaking unsolicited comments nobody said the, what uh what what i think cured me which was basically myself right right it was it was me it was it was i i, I when i called it my demon i told him i'm going to give you a horrible place to live oh. how about that i would talk to this thing yeah I'd be in my driveway talking to it, you yeah. know, telling "fuck you, bro." No, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I am not going to capitulate to this. This is not me. And and um. Uh, but then again, I'm, it's like false motivation. I'm trying to pump myself up. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. So it's, uh, speaking of faking, I got there's little things I have to remember, like going to Harris Teeter. I'm going to get recognized. People are going to know me and right. say, "Hey, Pat Mac, you know, love your stuff, this and that." Um. <clears throat> I would immediately get out of the car and go to the uh, grocery cart stall and get a cart because it was like a walker. <laughs> it was like a walker. Sure. Now, th the other thing is, you know, so I'm walking through, now I could stand up and I could sort of look normal walking, sort of. Uh, and then I'd have a fan say, hey, how's it going? And got to shake the hand. Number one, my arm's not going out fast. It's in mm -hmm. slow motion. 
And then what I had to do was not wince mm. when they grabbed and gripped my hand. You know, I couldn't and do that went on. To, that was a year of wincing while people shook my hand. You know, and the bigger, the badder the dude, the harder he gripped down, <laughs> the more I would go, oh my God, this sucks so bad. But I didn't want to tell it. You know, I didn't want to, yeah. I didn't want to make it deal it's not a place for me to air my dirty laundry on the interwebs sure. so i just said i'm just going to keep it as quiet as quiet as possible and see if i could break through this shit but the workout thing became a whole new adventure for me and this is where the working out really paid off in in dividends and going into this in good shape because now i'm getting out of shape my wind is suffering right. my cardio is suffering i'm losing muscularity i'm losing tons of strength tons of it it's all going away and then the prednisone i got a little i had a little pooch yeah yeah a little pooch belly now which brings me to another point um never ever ever in a million years did i think i'd be motivated by vanity <laughs> well when you're taking your shirts off for videos for a yep, few hundred yep, thousand people to see yep 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 uh so um but I, which, I which that has to be applauded again. dude because you still went out there and took your shirt off knowing yep. you were not looking like you were looking before I, right and I, but i had to review the video i'm like does this one look sort of like me <laughs> <laughs> you know i'd really have to like try to suck my gut in and and stand up tall and you know um uh because people were looking forward to it and and i thank the fan base who who i motivate yeah. um with putting out workout stuff because now they're motivating me yeah. They're like, they're, they're counting on this. The, the people who follow like the CST programming stuff, they are counting on this. I have to do it. And because I have to do it, I have to do it for them, but they're doing it for me. You know, so it was very reciprocal at this point. Right. right. And they had no idea. You know, the fan, the fan base had no idea. idea. Well, there were the, times um, like, like I would see, like we, we'd post videos of you on the range or something and, mm -hmm. and you'd like, the pistol would oh. slip a little or something. Yep. Yeah. And just to hear people just saying yep. whatever oh, the hell that they're tro going to yep. say, you know what yep. I mean? Oh, he's not all that. And blah, blah. And you're thinking, I'm yep. thinking I'm, I'm the one holding the camera and I, right. I know why he did that. Right. I know exactly yeah. why he did that. Well, you've, you've, you've lived it through this whole thing with me. Mm -hmm. I remember you said, dude, this is going on. We were like, dude, maybe you shouldn't drink so much beer. Remember that? We're like sitting right, on your patio right, going, maybe yeah, you shouldn't yeah. drink so much beer. Well, remember, so we really started talking about, you know, diet adjustments. And I started seeing a, uh, an, an, like an herbalist gal in town, hmm. um, does like holistic stuff, natural meds, all this. I started seeing her. Um, and I started seeing a bunch of other people. I, I mean, I researched my ass off here. Yeah. You know, when, with all the, you know, all the comments, all the comments people wrote, it's like, he yes, tried, tried the, he tried the, this. he tried the turmeric. He tried the turmeric. Right. That, yes. 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 Turmeric yes. didn't do I'm shit. I'm still on turmeric. Yes. Right. I'm still <laughs> on it just for shits and grins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do all that natural and inflammatory stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. It's, you know what, when I read all those comments, I told Rebecca, it's like, I think people think that I haven't tried anything. Yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah. I haven't tried a, a, a freaking thing. Nothing. <laughs> I'm true. just like nugging through this thing right. <laughs> that I, that I'm just wallowing in my own misery. No, uh, he, and could lect he could lecture freaking... on the topic. You could lecture right. on the topic. Yes, I can now. Um, but seeing how my diet's good. So it's mostly, mostly meat and, and good fats, a little bit of veg and no, not all the nightshades and stuff like this. You know, I eat my, and I eat my own veg. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we order meat, you know, I, I buy a cow from a local guy and right. then we order meat from a, so I don't, I stay away from this much because that was another, the comments went on and on and I'll oh, stay away from processed foods. Dude, I don't eat processed foods. Don't right. you know any, I mean, if you've been following me, you know about all my sayings, you know, about shopping the periphery of a grocery store and, uh, yeah, don't sure. be a human garbage can and blah, 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 blah. You know, hydrate water is the most important, uh, um, uh, nutrient that you could absorb drink a lot of it on and on yeah um so i started uh dialing back on some of the un unhealthy stuff like i wasn't gonna stop drinking but i but i i stopped drinking beer for yeah. instance because i'm thinking you know the gluten or whatever the, the sure. wheat you know the, right. the grain in it because that's that was the only real grain product that i would ingest right um so i stopped drinking that and just 
drinking other stuff. Like, I ain't yeah. stopping drinking, bro. I'm no. I'm not doing that. <clears throat> no. Um and uh but but the man, the working out was just that was Rebecca was my cheerleader too, man. I remember her and, and I felt I felt so bad for her during this thing. Yes. I mean, yeah. really, really, really bad that I had to that I had to suffer in front of her. Bro, can there was a, I can, there was a couple of times imagine. when stuff happened like even when we were shooting the the motorcycle mm-hmm. vlog, we yep. were like, I don't want to tell Rebecca right. what just right. happened. Right. <laughs> You know what yeah, I mean? There was right. a few cases yeah. where we were really? like, I'm not going to say anything. Don't say anything. Right. <laughs> Don't say anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I would, um, every once in a while, she'd come out in the driveway when I was warmed up mm-hmm. and just look at me. Yeah. She wouldn't say anything. She would just watch and she'd go back inside. And afterwards, I'd come in and she goes, I'm so proud of you. Mm. And I went, dude, I'm, and I would apologize to her. I'm saying, I'm so sorry. But she goes, you can't apologize. I said, no, but, but I am genuinely sorry. You know, yeah. I know I'm not doing this on purpose. Right. But, to, but, to cause but it's terrible that two have agony. to suffer. Yes. Yes. I just hated it for her more, more than anything that really killed me. Okay. Now um, I, 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 you may have this on your notes and I don't want to, mm-hmm. but yep. I, what hasn't been mentioned, cause we're talking about the pain. And what you mm-hmm. couldn't do, and what you couldn't lift, and what yep. can't get dressed, all that can't get in the car. Yep. Your enthusiasm, people, you know, they have to realize right. oh, that's dude. your super strength. That's that's my superpower, right? That's my superpower. Enthusiasm, motivation, get you some blaze ops, you know, so gone. This was more than attacking the physical body. It did yep. something there. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was all gone. It was all gone. My mood was crap. It was in the gutter, because it's just constant pain, entire body. Yeah. Another, another, another thing I told when one guy said, "What does it feel like?" I said, "You ever been in a motorcycle crash?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "That's what it feels like. You've been in a bad motorcycle crash, and you freaking got thrown through the air. You hit a car, boom, everything freaking hurts, but now it doesn't go away." You know, mm-hmm. uh, so back to one of the descriptions of pain, I told people that I felt like I was poisoned too, that it was septic. It felt septic. It felt like my my bone marrow was poisoned. Yes. That's what it felt like because it was in deep in my bones. I just felt poisoned, you know, Uh, like it was like, it was, it was freaking Mac kryptonite. Yeah. was what it was. Yeah. Uh, Because I remember using that one too. I said, you know what? I could only imagine what like Superman felt like when mm-hmm. kryptonite was around. Right. This is what it, this is yeah. my kryptonite. Yeah. Everything freaking hurts. It's in my whole body. Some things are more agonizing than others. Uh, the big joints suffered the most, you know, hips, knees, shoulder, the big, all the big stuff. Uh, those suffered the most. Um, the, uh, let me see, brain, shoulders, back. Uh, oh, um, Oh yeah, t- taps course ninety three degrees, super humid. Body felt good, but exhausted both days. So there was a couple of days when I r- run cu- cu- courses that I didn't feel horrible, but I got smoked, man, smoked. Now that was one time I disclosed it during yes, courses. I remember that at the beginning of the course when I was running courses in the summer. I say, hey guys, I got to tell you something up front. I have this this disease called PMR. Um, and I just should a brief description. I said, so it, I'm not hung over or anything, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just, I I'm exhausted already. The day hasn't begun. I, I, my motivation is shit. I have no grip strength, this and that. So anyway, we're still going to have a good course, yeah. but understand that I am not, I'm, I'm not myself right now. I am not myself. Mac, and I just told oh, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me, uh, this is really more for the concluding thought kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know what's running through people's heads and it's mm-hmm. okay. It seems an impossibility if you feel that bad physically and mm-hmm. you're then drained of all energy, drained of all enthusiasm. Yep. How? How can you do this? How can you possibly right. push through? How could you possibly right. fake? How could you, po- as if the entire world had no idea you were going yep. through all right. of this? Where is that? <laughs> I did, 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 and, and that's a that's a really really good question. I think me naming it, and and um, 
uh, I see once again, I'm getting emotional right now. I'm thinking about it. Uh, me name, me naming it when I named it, you know, when I gave it a fucking name and said, this is my demon challenge accepted. Yeah. Everything's a competition challenge accepted. Yeah. I'm going to kick your ass. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to freaking, I'm going to kick your ass. Uh, because it was, it was real. That was, that was the, I think I was just in a co this competition with myself at that point. Yeah. Uh, once I gave it a name, it became, it became personal. It became a personal mission, you yeah. know, to, uh, to just to try to crush this thing. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I'm just glad that it's, it was there. It's a, and then it became, and because it was a mission, then it became a day after day yeah. ritual. It was habitual at that point. Yeah. It's like, all right, yep. This sucks really, really bad today. I don't want to do anything, nothing, nothing at all, nothing, but which means I have to do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, I can't remember. I'm looking at my notes here, but uh, there's a lot of associated pain that comes with this. So for guys suffering from it, I'm, I'm going to talk about the next one, which this is when it really started. It, just like it can't, it can't be any worse, you know? It's yeah. like it can't be any worse. Now, all of a sudden, because of the inflammation, the nerve pain. Enough. So now the nerve pain sets in. So now I'm on, uh, I can't, I can't stand it. So now I'm on zofosylazine, hydroxychloroquine, uh, prednisone and, uh, gabapentin. Um, and, uh, cause the gabapentin is the nerve blocker. Didn't do anything, nothing. Mm. The nerve pain was so bad that I couldn't drive. Like Rebecca had to drive me everywhere. Whenever we yeah. went somewhere, she had to drive me everywhere. and I couldn't make it downtown with her. I, we'd have to pull over. Mm. And so I could get out of the car and like stretch my legs and like, Try to because the nerve I, I i would she'd see me in this in the in the passenger seat just going oh my god dude <laughs> uh so the nerve pain got really bad but one of the things i wanted to do is try to get out of the house you know like at night and like go to the pub or like at five you know that kind of thing um and just have just have a couple one or two drinks or something uh chat with the pub peeps and um you know, just carry on like life is everything's yeah. everything's the way it's been. But I remember there were times, and those of you who have nerve pain know this feeling right here. I would actually look at my hands. I would stare at them because I thought they were on fire. Hmm. I was like, I, I, or that they have glass shards in the knuckles. Hmm. That's, I mean, I, I could, I could, I could feel it. I could feel my hands on fire. I could feel glass shards, but I would stare at them. You know, just stay, I'm like, dude, what? Because I expected them to like just ignite, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, combust, you know, immediately. They just felt like they were going to explode. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there was a lot of associated swelling with that too, swelling yes. around the knees and the, and the hands and the elbows and the shoulder, just, just in, a lot of just visible did you, inflammation. Did you have to change your, your wedding ring out? Yeah, yeah, I had to get a bigger size. You know, I went uh, to, uh, my uh, that Montana trip in um, 22 um, and uh, I went with one other guy in the morning we were leaving I got up and my hands were fat I was like oh shit bro so I said hold on we can't drive yet I got to go to the bathroom and and soaked up and I barely got it off barely mm -hmm. hour later my hands were just gigantic they were fat they were like balloons if I didn't get that wedding band off in time I wouldn't have been able to go out into the wilderness, you know? Um, and, and, but I still did the wilderness trip too. And I talked to <laughs> Eric about it cause he mm -hmm. went this year, yeah. completely different me this year than last year. Uh, I was wiped out, man. I, I was, I didn't know if I could make my track or not, you know, if I, in, in 22. Um, but the nerve pain associated was, was crippling. And now we started this phase of no sleep because of nerve pain. Right. So there's no sleep with nerve pain. So you're doing about four hours a night and this would go for months. So it was, it was very typical. I get up at two in the morning. Very, very typical. I was so used to this. Yeah. Get up at two in the morning and I'd sit in the recliner, just sit. And then with luck, I would doze, you right. know, at least just doze because I couldn't go, I couldn't recline. I had to sit up straight, just a slight recline. And then I would pray for, just let me doze a little bit, just like, right. just some dozing. And I would, and then the nerve pain would became crippling. And I'd stand up and walk around uh, for about a half an hour and then sit back down for half an hour and you doze again. 
and then you wake up. This was a this was a nightly ritual. This is just every freaking night, you know. Uh, and I even went in and got um, a uh, you know epidermal uh, because I do have I have I've got nerve problems in my neck. But the thing is, this uh, the inflammation exacerbates all this stuff. Sure, you know everything. It just exacerbates everything. So it's all now tenfold. All this crap. Um, yeah, the nerve pain freaking blew bad. All right, let me go back to my notes. Shins, feet, Nick, battling sciatica, buttocks, uh, numb, weak, blah, 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 blah. Doc Tracy, well, hydroxy. The nerve go pain, ahead. I remember yep. when, this is February of, when did we go to Winter Strong? Um, oh, yeah, I'm getting to that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting to that. That's part of the, the sequence here because that was kind of a change. That was a... Uh, that's when that's when everything started changing. That was a game changer for me. Okay, winter strong. Um, <clears throat> so you know, I, one of the one of the easiest ways for me to work out, I I, I listed it here, and this is boring as hell. Mm-hmm. I would get on the ski erg for an hour. Wow. And when I first got on, I'm barely pulling those ropes, barely, barely. You know, but 20 minutes in, if I could just do 20 minutes, I could start pulling this thing and getting a little bit more range of motion. I'm like, well, I'm on it now and I'm starting to pull harder. May as well just stay on it. Mm-hmm. May as well just stay on it. Same thing mm-hmm. with the bike. You know, well, may as well do another run up the cul-de-sac because I'm starting. It, it, it's, yeah. I'm not in agony anymore. You know, uh, uh, yeah. Um, let me see hips all over, ache, no mobility, lost. So appetite, exhaustion, fatigue, August. So these are my notes. Let me see. Uh, counting, I mean, nerve pain, inflammation, remember, so perspective. Yeah, th- this was a big one too. I wrote this down. Uh, I said, I had to remind myself to put things into perspective because, uh, and I couldn't publicly piss and moan because sure. I know people have it worse. Right. People have it worse, you know? Yeah. I mean, life sucks for some people in with, with chronic freaking pain, disease, cancer, all this crap, man. You know, so I couldn't piss and moan publicly about it. I thought, I thought that would be so freaking chicken shit, man. I do not need a freaking pity party. I don't want anybody to know about it until I figure something out here, you know? Um, uh, yeah, that, uh, so February now of 22, February, February of 22. Um, I go to uh, Winter Strong, and it was really bad. And I did tell uh, Bert. Bert Soren, who's in charge of Winter Strong, because he asked me if I could help him with uh, some classes. I said, absolutely. I said, hey, by the way, man, I'm not myself. Mm-hmm. I got this thing. Right. <laughs> so I can't do the competitions and stuff, which I was bummed out about, you know. Sure. I said, we, we, we really don't need anybody to know, but I need to tell you <laughs> that mm-hmm. I have this thing. I'm just not myself. And – it, it got, it was really bad there. Um, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping in the tent and it's wet out and stuff like that. Yeah. So that could have, uh, helped, um, exacerbate the conditions as well or the symptoms. Uh, but the day you showed up, um, I could barely walk. Yeah. You remember that when you oh, showed yeah. up to do some filming, I could mm-hmm. barely walk. I mean, my knees were just locked into position. They were locked into position and I'm struggling, just struggling to walk. Uh, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to shake anybody's hand, but I did. I faked it pretty good. I thought, you know, to some degree, I faked it a little bit. Um, We just walked around. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Drank when they brought the beer out finally. Yep. 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 I just didn't, I just didn't have anything in me. Yep. Um, it was, uh, n- there was, uh, oh yeah. So at winter strong was, was my, when I found out some information about yes. how I could help combat this. Right. And I think out of the 500 unsolicited comments, one person mentioned this yeah. one. So I, um, <clears throat> the morning before you got there, I got out of my tent and um i i'm crawling because i'm i'm in the so i can't just stand up right i got out of the tent all fours and i'm struggling to stand up you know i'm struggling to stand up i'm I'm getting it i'm like all right i just have to stand up and then let momentum take me to my Mm -hmm. truck so i can start brewing coffee and stuff like this and there was a um um this guy's name i forget his last name coach coach pat uh uh he was a, a strength and conditioning coach um 
in, he was one of of the many strength uh, 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 credible strength and conditioning coaches at this event. And he goes, "What's up? Did you hurt yourself?" I I go, "Nah, man, I got this thing." And I started explaining to him, and he just looked at me and he said, "Infrared sauna." And I said, "What?" He said, "Infrared sauna." He goes, "My wife has rheumatoid arthritis, and that's that's been a game changer for her." Mm-hmm. And I I said, "Oh, cool, right on," you know. And he 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 we shared a link, you know. He said, "Let me sh- send you a link," but. It, this made Rebecca real sad when I said this the first time. I felt so bad that I didn't want to help myself. Oh, wow. She got, dude, and I, it just came out. I was just making a, a mention, yeah. you know, uh, but that was very, very upsetting and depressing for her. And I, and, and I should have checked myself. I, I was just stating a, a matter of fact. I said, you know, I just, I feel so bad that I don't even want to, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know what to do. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to even try to make myself better because I don't have the energy for it, you know, yeah. or the patience or whatever it is. Um, so I get back home from that and I'm just happy to be home because I barely made it home because my hand, I, I, your hands get so bad that you can't close them or open them. They're just stuck here like a claw. Oh, which brings me to another point, sleeping. Yeah. I would feel it come on at night. You know, like 1 a.m. or so, midnight, 1 a.m., I would feel this come on, the claw. So I would just put my hands under my butt, flat, mm. flat under my butt, <laughs> and just flatten them out and sleep like that for an hour. Jeez. Because they wouldn't open or close. <clears throat> so I would have to sleep on them. Uh, you figure a lot of shit out, you know? Yeah, right. You think you, you 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 really do. You you know, you you figure out how to improvise and and make yourself better. And and th- and this is what I started doing. I started becoming my own doctor. Yes. At that point, you know, I started becoming my own my own doctor. Um I had less and less confidence in the docs cuz I've been yeah. going to them now for mm, at this point uh it was a, it was a year at this point. Yeah. So shortly after winter strong because now it's May of 22. Right. Uh, that was February twenty two. By May of of uh, uh, started in May of twenty one. By May of twenty two, I started becoming my own doctor. Yeah, and started figuring more stuff out. Now, when I got back from Winter Strong, um, I uh, I was at the pub and I'm walking in to get something, and I hear one of my pub peeps as the door is shutting. He goes infrared sauna, boom, and the door shuts, and I whip it open, and I said, Brian. What'd you say about infrared sauna? He goes, oh yeah, I went to infrared sauna today. There's a, uh, there's a spa in town, a salt spa. I said, get out of here. He said, yeah. So I tell Rebecca immediately. And mm. the next day we made an appointment. Yes. <laughs> the next day, this was a Saturday. They were open on Sunday. They were mm. open. Great. And um, this is one of the many, many times that Rebecca cried. Is uh I I I limped across the street just in, in freaking agony. Uh, we do the infrared sauna. The gal had it all warmed up. Um, so infrared sauna is different than regular sauna. Traditional sauna heats the air around you. Uh, infrared sauna heats your body. You know, it right. cooks your it cooks your core. So big big difference here. Um, when we got out of it after a, a thirty minute session, um, I got dressed and. As I'm walking back across the street to the car, I look up and I look at Rebecca and I says, Rebecca, I shit you not. I feel like 25% better right now. Wow. I mean, it was a notice, noticeable yeah. difference. Yeah. There was a noticeable difference in my hips and my shoulders and my back. Noticeable. It wasn't great, but it was noticeable. Mm-hmm. So I started going there. You know, I started I, I religiously, like every day, man. I was calling up that lady. Sue mm-hmm. was her name. I was calling her up. She knew me now. Yeah. Uh, and I started mentioning this to the squad, you know, our, our, our coaching squad. And yeah. uh, one day I get a visit from one of the squad members at, at the pub. And he says, what are you still thinking about getting, a, getting an infrared sauna? I say, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I mean, do you have a place in town? And uh, Ken, he slides me an envelope. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't even open it. I know what it is. I said, bro, you got to be freaking kidding me. He goes, nah, man, the squad bought you an infrared yeah. sauna. Yeah, dude, I I I broke I broke down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Rebecca I was, was there I too, right? Um, no, she came after that. Okay, and I told her, and she cried. She yeah. was hysterical. She was yeah, 
um, <clears throat> I was like, oh my God, I can't really believe. So immediately bought it that night, yeah. bought it. So now I've got one from my garage that I could just go on, on a whim. You know, I crank it up and, you, you know, you, 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 when you think temperatures, you can't think traditional sauna. I hate right. mine up to like a 140. Uh, and it, <laughs> you could barely stand that for 30 minutes at 140. Mm. I mean, it is brutal, man. You get shortness yeah. of breath and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is brutal in that thing, man. Um, but you get out and you feel better. And then I started incorporating. I get out of the, the infrared sauna, go right into the cold shower. You know, just doing that. Uh, and so, you know, I started noticing some results. This was right. now, uh, uh, I think I got the infrared on in like a, maybe June or something. Maybe maybe earlier than that. It could have been May of that year of 22. Yeah. Um, uh, and kept adjusting the diet, just trying different stuff. You know, what can work, what isn't going to work. Uh, and you, you just go a couple months, you know, I, I would do two months of something and say, well, screw that. I like doing that thing. I'm going to keep doing it. Sure. There's no noticeable difference. Um, but, um, one of the big things I did late in 22, about September, October of 22. So just last year, um, was I started weaning myself off to all the medication. Yeah. And then I started taking stuff like a bird dock root. Uh, and, uh, I started the, um, uh, Spanish sea moss and, uh, I started, um, turmeric. Yes. The turmeric. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, the other thing that I'm suffering from now at this point, so, uh, through, mid 22 until just a few months ago was uh the ibs yeah. which is associated with inflammation as well yes, yes. so I, I mean i don't mean to be explicit here but it you know it was nine months of just peeing out the butt you eat yeah. something it's gone immediately eat something gone immediately it, it was just in, immediate immediate yeah. um so started more uh see because one of the things with the diet that i started adjusting is i I was heavy, 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 red meat, red meat, red meat, red meat. Right. Heavy. You know, uh, I mean, I, I, like three or four times a day, you know, sure. in small portions. Right. Because um, that's how I eat, just small portions. Um, so I started weaning myself off that a little bit, just kind of finding a balance. Uh, a lot of salmon. Dude, I'm yeah. still eating salmon yeah. like every day. <laughs> I, I eat salmon every day now. Yeah, fish oil. Man. It's every single day I put a big chunk in the air fryer. Every mm -hmm. single day. So I started salmon, more chicken, still eating red meat because I love red meat and it's, and I'm a freaking man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm still going to eat that. I'm still going to eat my collard greens, you know, yeah. but my diet's good. You know, it's good. It's, it's not, I don't think it's about diet necessarily. Of course there's associating factors. I there's, understand. Th th well, there are things that can aggravate. There, there are things that can right. help, but the, the mm -hmm. basic condition is still in place. That's what, that's why we laugh about the right. turmeric. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do anything. It may shave off a little inflammation, but it's this is an illness that came of its own. It didn't come because right. you had that one thousandth beer one too thing. many. Right, one thousand. Right, yes, yeah. And here's the other thing about it: we didn't. I didn't even mention this at the beginning. So polymyalgia rheumatica, it's unknown. It's an unknown. Is it autoimmune? Possibly. Yeah. Is it uh, a, a bacterial infection? Possibly. Is it parasitic? Possibly. Yeah. I'm not, there's no, there's, I haven't gotten a good answer for, about it, mm -mm. Nope. but, uh, but then again, I don't care what freaking cause it. My, right. my problem now is how do I freaking beat this yeah. thing? You know, yeah. I got to get back to me, bro. I yes. got to get back to me. Um, so now I'm on the, um, the, uh, the infrared sauna, cold showers afterwards. Uh, and I start weaning myself off the, all the medication, um, and I'm going to the health food store a lot. I started taking the greens, you know, stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on, you know, anything that I, 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 cause I know the guy who runs the uh, health food store in town and he's very well educated. I say, Hey, right. tell me all the lists of natural uh, inflammatory, uh, anti-inflammatories that are natural. And he gave me a big list of them. Um, and I dialed back on some, some veg, which was a bummer because it can cause inflammation um, so I started dialing back on some of that stuff. Uh, 
so let me see to put it back into chronological chronological order here uh started weaning myself off the medication right so i'm barely on any now by no i think november i quit it all yeah i quit all the medication well you would tell uh, me like every week hey i cut yep. off this hey i shaved yep. a little bit off of that <laughs> Yep. The, the amount of pill bottles I th and I should have I should have filmed that. I had pill bottles. Didn't out. we yeah. didn't we film a little bit of it? I think we did. I'm going to go back. Yeah. And I might have the footage. Yep. We may have filmed it, but we didn't post it. Right. Yep. I'll have to go look. All right. Yeah. You, you know, I was one of these guys that I would get text messages from the pharmacy. Your 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 prescription is ready. <laughs> I never, I didn't even know where my pharmacy was. You know, when I first went to the doctor, <laughs> mm -hmm. he said, take this to your pharmacy. I'm like, what do pharmacy? I have a pharmacy? <laughs> I just found out I had a doctor. I don't know. Yeah. A pharmacy. I guess most human beings have a pharmacy. Yeah. I guess Which they is do. pathetic, bro. It's <laughs> pathetic that we have a pharmacy, man. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, it, oh, I learned a lot about that stuff too. You know, the big pharma crap, oh, which we, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. go into all that, but right. dude, what a freaking scam, man. You know? Um, oh shit. We might get freaking banned for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so I started weaning myself and then went cold turkey. Um, and here's another thing that I started in about November that year. Uh, I got. I wrote it down. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah. Craniosacral massage. Yes. See, there's something else that 500 comments didn't unsolicited no. comments didn't mention. Craniosacral massage. I was so going to say not, it, but I didn't because right. I couldn't spell it. Right. right. So uh, basically, so we've got a friend who's a massage therapist, yeah. right? So Katie's a massage therapist and Rebecca's been going to her and she said, Mac should give this a freaking try, this craniosacral mm -hmm. massage. And I'm like, Ugh, you know, I'm just, right. I'm not, I'm not into, I, I, I'm not into trippy, massage, yeah. period, mm -hmm. you know, but this is a different thing. It's very, there's a very, it's a very personal c connection. You know, it's, it's very personal uh, with, uh, and I dug it right away because it, it wasn't, it wasn't a massage, you know, it's per se, the way we think of it, you know, she's trying to pinpoint certain things on the body, gut, brain uh, connection. So it moves fluids around the central nervous system and allows the body to self-correct is what mm. this does, craniosacral massage. That's the layman's term. That's knuckle dragger version of right. the uh, definition of that. So it moves fluids around the central nervous system and allows the body to self-correct. So that's one of the other things that I started. And then around December, still doing now uh, infrared sauna, craniosacral massage. Uh, yes, the turmeric, <laughs> but uh, the Co CoQ10. You know, to rebuild okay, yeah. cells yeah, yeah. and ginseng and uh, shilajit. So it's a uh, supplement from the Himalayas. Okay. Tastes like absolute living hell. <laughs> tastes like it tastes like burnt freaking it, uh, horse manure. You know, yeah. uh, it's really, really bad. Uh, now, before you continue, did did the cranial massage help? At, uh, you know what? All of these things I'm doing now, I started okay. feeling better. Right. Okay. So I can't pinpoint which one it right. is. Gotcha. I don't know which one it is. Yeah. I'm not going to stop any one of them. I'm done no. experimenting this way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because it was literally in December. Yeah. Right. December, January of this year where I'm like, dude, I think I'm freaking beating this thing, man. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. What month are we in now? August. Yeah. yeah. So I start, I mean, I, everything still hurts, but I have mobility. You're right. And it's not excruciating. You know, I could take my T-shirt on and off now. It just hurts like hell when I do that. <laughs> right. Uh, and I could button. I could use because that was a bummer too. I'm very right. dexterous. You know, right. I draw. I play the guitar. I play the drums. I couldn't do any of it. None of it. You work no with tiny, oh. tiny, tiny squirrel surgeon tools. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's another thing: reading a book. No, yeah. this was just. It was painful. It was. It. Was, to turn a page uh, was, um, it's like fingernails on the chalkboard. So what about I holding, didn't want to, like holding a book or holding a pad or something? That wasn't that? bad. That wasn't okay. bad. But turning a page was like fingernails on a chalkboard. Wow. Uh, just super sensitive. All the nerve endings and the, in, with the inflammation. So I didn't want to even read. I didn't want to read. It's almost like a gout. Yeah, right. Well, I've had that. I know what gout feels like. I've yeah. had gout. I've had shingles. I've had all that crap. Uh, gout sucked bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it was like it was like oh, for those of you who had gout, imagine gout your entire body. How about that? Wow. Yep. That's what it was like. Gout entire body. Yeah, it was just it was it was it, 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 the pain is hard for me to uh, describe unless people know pain, sure. you know, and discomfort. Yeah. Uh, but so like dudes who are dudes, when I said, you ever been in a bad motorcycle wreck, you know, how you feel afterwards, that's how I feel all the time right now. <laughs> and they went, Oh, I get that. I understand yeah, that right. completely. <laughs> right. Um, Oh, another thing people, people have asked and, and I told them no, no, even over the counter meds like mo- uh, po- uh, ibuprofen right. or, right. you know, so, uh, uh, so now and there's nothing. There's no prescription meds. I have no prescription meds right now. None. Zero. Get rid of that crap. So back to the vanity, you know, I was getting that little pooch yeah. and scabs on my arms mm. and the fat cheeks, you know, yeah. uh, losing um, um, all uh, like my, my legs were starting to atrophy. Mm-hmm. So I really, I couldn't believe that vanity motivated me. I didn't want to look like shit next to Rebecca. Sure. Man. Yeah. You know, it was, <laughs> <laughs> I did I wanted her to see me naked and go, hell yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And not go, whoo. Who's this invalid? Right, right. Um, And then I I completely stopped seeing the docs last year around uh, probably like September. I just went, nah, I'm not going back. I had appointments. I didn't even go. Yeah. I was like, nah, I'm going to figure this out. It's like, I'm I'm just going to keep. Well, at this point, your guess is as good as theirs because that's what right. everybody's doing at this point. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, um, for people who have this, like, so with the polymyositis rheumatica, with 50% of people who have it, the symptoms start subsiding after about a year and a half. So that was, that was me, but without all the heavy doses of prednisone. So right. I think perseverance was the big one working out you know yeah. and then experimenting with all this other crap man dude i went to a freaking apache healer and stuff yeah <laughs> but um um so another thing that i started doing because you just sleep i mean just sleep was distressing still because of the pain and yeah. the nerve pain is uh i started uh smoking the cannabis at night yeah um so and it, it became every night i'm no longer be- drinking beer but i'm like sipping wine you know, or sipping bourbon. And I remember, you know, starting to feel better. And Rebecca asked me one night, she was so funny. I had to write it down. She goes, how is wine and weed the remedy for your ailment? How could that be a thing? (laughs) (laughs) Now don't try this at home, kids. I'm just saying (laughs) we're all different human beings. You know, you got to do a lot. CJ told me to try it. (laughs) Right. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, let me see. Where's it, my other notes? I got a couple other ones here. So yeah. So, uh, um, but none of the unsolicited comments comments talked about craniosacral massage, right. and only one talked about infrared sauna. So right. I would recommend both of those people. Yeah. Chronic nerve pain. I don't know why weed is illegal, because damn. Yeah. Damn. I'm sorry. I, 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 Rebecca actually said to me, she goes, you know, when you start feeling like better and you start disclosing this stuff, you should be an advocate for that. She goes, not being a pothead, but being an advocate for this stuff. And I went, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty freaking close to that right now. Yeah. (sighs) And then I'm going to throw in one more. Mm. The, the magic shrooms. Yeah. Yep. The psilocybin. So for about two months now, microdose. You know, I, I don't like to be outside of my cognitive faculties. Even yeah. when I drink, I like to drink. I, I'm an everydayer. I'm right. an everyday drinker. I don't want to be outside of my cognitive faculties. I don't want to be drunk. I don't want to be stoned. You know, I don't want to uh, watch the, the paint melt on the wall. Sure. You know, um, not that everything's in moderation because that's not my saying. My saying no. is everything in excess, bro. <laughs> Live life to the fullest. <laughs> I've, I've been to your house. Yes, there's right. been there's been yeah. some excess, <laughs> right? Right. There's there's excess, but you've never seen me like staggering. You know? No, you've never no. Seen me outside of my gourd. No, know? we we bumped am... into lawn furniture. That's about it. Right. 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 <laughs> yes, right. Yes. Um, but that one there. Now I'm still kind of new to it, and I have to find like my threshold dose when yeah. it comes to microdosing, uh, and then how I ingest it. Uh, 
but what what I did what I've been doing with it is I put uh, some shrooms in a uh, coffee bean grinder, and then basically pulverized and powder. And then I I actually bought a scale, you know, a micro scale, and I'm doing. I'm gonna have all the mushroom freaking uh, professionals telling me this or that and this. Right. I don't care, bro. It's it's all about the individual on this. Yeah, you got the individual has to find a threshold dose. What's gonna make them loopy and what's gonna be not enough. So, um, uh, see, even Daryl chimed in. Heck yeah, mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so mine's about a half. Yeah, it's about a half a gram. And so I, I mix it with hot water, make tea, put honey in it. And man, talk about mood bolstering mood, you know, especially for chronic pain people. Yeah. Now the pain's still there, but my mood improves. Mm. And then I've noticed sleep patterns increase too. That's really so. Cool. And then I'm going to mention the last one. This is another thing that n- none of these people, I, I reading all those comments, 500 comments, right? Mm. What do we say? What do we see? Uh, 300 and say carnivore diet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, or try this drug, try that drug. Right. Dude, you, you don't think I've tried anything? Yeah. So let me give <laughs> you guys some advice. <laughs> so we got the infrared sauna. We got the craniosacral massage. We got the weed. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got the uh, microdosing, psilocybin. Yeah. Um, and then the CoQ10, ginseng, uh, the greens, uh, and then grounding, man, I'm an everyday earther now, every day. Mm. And I've been, now I've been doing this for about eight months. Rebecca put me on it. Right. So what that is, is your body earth connection. Walk out first thing in the morning. Yes. If it's cold, go out there in the cold, bare feet and just walk around the grass, walk around on the earth. You are energy. Your body is energy. Go out there and ground. And I do, I'll do it for about 15, 20 minutes every morning with my first morning cup of coffee. Yeah. I'll look at the flowers. Look at the vegetable gardens. Yeah. Talk to my chickens. Yeah. You know, and this is just me. It's nobody. Else. I don't want any distractions, man. Right. I don't even want my dogs out there because I don't want mm. Grace to like chew on grass and have her mouth noises. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be just me. I don't want, yeah. you know, um, and then I go walk the dogs after that, after I ground, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, we've, we've made sure that there's no like devices in the bedroom you know, device, phone, computer, and stuff like that, uh, because that's horrible for you. That stuff is absolutely freaking horrible for you. I mean, I think there's even research right now saying that you could get wi- actual Wi-Fi poisoning. <laughs> no kidding. Yep. Um, so, but but um, I guess the bottom line is right now, so uh, is that I'm so freaking grateful. Yes. The way I feel. Everything hurt. Like, if when I think about it, if somebody says, Hot, what hurts right now? So, well, I mean, everything aches. I could, I just turned my neck. I could feel both sides of my neck. I right. could feel every knuckle hurts. Um, sho- <laughs> <laughs> shoulders hurt. Um, <clears throat> hips hurt. Knees hurt. But it's not bad. It's not incapacitating because right. that's where I was. For more than a year and a half, it was incapacitating. So if I could just have this right now, I'm good with it. I'm yeah. good with this constant ache yeah. because I'm getting my energy back. I'm getting enthusiasm back. Yes. Strength is back. Dude, I'm working out like a madman. But here's here's a freaking, here's something that I, this is one of those things that'll make me emotional if I really mm. think about it again, because I've yes. said this to you a bunch. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, glad I ha- I'm glad I have this. I'm glad it was horrible. Because, uh, man, do I appreciate feeling good. Yes. yes. You know, I appreciate feeling good. And there's some days now where, I'll have zero pain. You know, they're rare. Maybe one, two days every uh, two days during two weeks. You know, and, and usually there's. Some, I say two days every two in two weeks because they're usually sequential. Mm-hmm. It's like two days in a row. Uh, and man, I'll take advantage of that. I am just. I am. I am setting the world on fire, bro. Mm-hmm. Set the world on fire. Yeah. I mean, I am setting the world on fire with that stuff. Um. But yeah, man. So that's that's kind of that was a pretty good like hour and fifteen minute explanation of that stuff right there. Yeah, I, but but I am you, ready for any questions. Well, I think it initially it goes back to I think the the thing that's always going to stand out to me, which is why I asked the question. You know how? Mm-hmm. Um, because right. there's something about the force of will. There's just something yes. about it that makes the yeah. universe bend. Mm-hmm. 
You know, it's how right. we've created so many great, wonderful. You have to bend reality itself. This yep. is not magic. It's just, and we can't explain it. We're just using what words we can come up with to try to explain a phenomena that happens because two people can have similar conditions or one can have far worse than the other. And the one with the far worse condition prevails while the other one folds. I had yep. a, I, I posted a video the other day of, of Grant Cardone and he was talking about, he was, he was ridiculing the, you know, everybody's jumping on the mental in, illness bandwagon. I've got yeah, this, right. I've got this initials, PTS this and AD this mm -hmm. and all of these things. And he says, he says, I don't have the luxury or the time for that. He said, my acronyms are W-I-N. I have to win. Right. That's what I have to do. Good, good. Now, every time, I, I, and I've done my mental motivation thing for 14 years. Dude. The one thing that I've, the, I've had this conversation hundreds of times if I've had it once. Every time you touch one of those things, depression, mm -hmm. stress, anxiety, whatever, you don't know what I've been through. How dare you say this? How dare you <laughs> say that? And they start flying off the handle. And what's funny is that even in the post, I, I went and wrote in there. I said, Here's the thing, is that if you put as much effort into leaning into that, mm -hmm. you know, solving your issues and, and pushing against it, and if you put more energy into that than defending your position, defending <clears throat> the weakness that you have, defending the handicap, defending the ailment, staying in the sort of victim type, woe is me, and, and walking with the limp all the time— you yep. would make some progress. But 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 what's funny is that and I dude, I had people who were arguing me on this Instagram post tag me on Facebook to some guy trying to say how you can't just tell people in depression to get over it. Nobody's telling anybody to get over it. We're talking about the people who use these things as cop outs. Yep. You know what I mean? So if if I teach on Absolutely. if I teach on saving money or financially increasing, don't tell me, well, what is the what is the poor guy in Botswana do? Poor mm -hmm. guy, Botswana is not watching this, right? Right. We're talking to the. Hey, plus, he doesn't have it, bro. He doesn't have that stuff. That's an American thing. That's, That's some American... first world stuff. Exactly. Depressed and in... yeah. Exactly. So it's you know so That's but, some first world crap right there. But the point, you know, but the point is, is that you can see even in this simple example, what, you know, you applied to this. There's something mm -hmm. like you said. It's you gave it a name. You gave it a horrible place to live. I added that line in the notes on the YouTube video. I said, I added that line in there because I said, I don't, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gave it a horrible place to live. But what that did, it's, it's not the naming itself. It's not, it's because those were ways for Mac to incarnate his, the, the, the pain was deep, but there's a spirit in him that's deeper. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that propels him. And that's the thing that was finally under attack. It took a, a, a pain, something that made you septic to your bones to yeah. attack the very thing that nobody could attack. Not on a battlefield, not somebody's rude comments on social media, not an right. ex-wife, not any other trying certain. Nothing could touch, you know, the it, it penetrate the shield of your heart, where your vision, where your energy, where your personal power, where your enthusiasm, where your motivation was, your spirit mm -hmm. on fire. This was something that got really, really close. Right. And for the average person, mm -hmm. they would have acquiesced. And yeah, and you I, would understand. I'm hoping it. we could change. I'm, I'm hoping we could change yeah. th that average person's mind. Exactly. You know? Because and, and 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 this was it was it's and it still is it's very personal to me. This is the first time I'm sharing it like this, open forum. Because uh, once again, I don't want to I don't want a pity party from anybody. This is per, this is personal. I don't want anybody's help. You know what no, I mean? I right. want to do this. Yeah. I want it because I I did suffer from depression. I didn't tell any. I didn't even know what it was. I went through years of that, and I got myself out of that shit too. You know, I just I just woke up and I put a rubber band around my neck and snapped the fuck out of it. Yeah. Um, you have it wasn't to. That easy, but, <laughs> well, well, you have right. to because right. you know it's like I, I'll tell that we can, we can, you can tell me how bad you had it, and I'll you tell you what I believe you. I honestly mm -hmm. believe you. I'll sign a document in front of a lawyer. I will S swearing yep. on my life that what you went through was the worst any other human being has ever gone through. Yeah, and now that we are completely agreed upon that. Now what? Right. Because we can't yeah, talk well. about it anymore. 
We've agreed that it's terrible. We've agreed your situation is terrible. Why you stay there, though, and don't do anything right. to Nothing. change it is mm-hmm. the part that I think is so important yeah. about you discussing. This is like you said, this is not a pity party. This is not Mac mm-hmm. whining. This is <laughs> that's nothing about that. He's had we've been talking about this for two years now, and we never yep. really shared it with anybody. The squad knows. Yep. But this is a public thing now. And and there was a lot of compassion, you know? Yeah, of course. A lot of people just like couldn't believe it. And they were mm-hmm. so inspired by just a little video that was post just that not even a minute right. long yep so out of this we want people to get i want i want to see people get the science of of how mac mentally spiritually and physically came against his demon man it's that Dude, man i freaking that i'm I, you know i'm 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 so motivation was gone i'm just blessed with freaking attitude which that was shot too, but the discipline thing, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The discipline thing, the structure. You know, and but that was that was a big revelation for me, giving it a name. And and Rebecca was a big motivator for me because I did not want her to see me being beaten by something. Because I, and I told her this the other day, you know, I, and this has nothing to do with the PMR. I says, Rebecca, you know what? You know how I feel? I feel invincible. I say, you know why I feel invincible? Because you make me feel invincible. There you go. I mean, I, that's it. You know, I'm like her hero, which, man, you know, uh, it's it's good to have somebody championing, championing, uh, you know, yeah. in your corner, you know, yeah. a champion in your corner like that. Who, um, but she motivated me without saying any. Oh, and that's the other thing. That was brilliant on her part. No, no pity. It, I could see it was it was killing her. Yeah, but she'd never freaking patted me on the back or mm-hmm. rubbed, you know, and said, you know, oh, it'll be okay. She never did any of that shit because she knew that it would drive me freaking batshit crazy. She went through the whole thing, and I know she it was she was bummed out the entire time. Um, but she never did the pity thing with me ever, yeah. ever, and I thank her all the time for that. Like, I'm so glad because then I probably would have started feeling sorry for myself if she had done that. Yeah, that's that's, that's why I don't like people saying, oh, Rebecca, you know, is young. I'm like, dude, she, you have she, no she got idea. Wisdom beyond years, man. You have no idea. <laughs> right, I forget yeah. all of the, just, she, trust me, she, I, I, yep. to me, she's like a colleague, bro. <laughs> right. Rebecca's yeah, yeah, a colleague, really. man. Yeah, yeah. But but here's the thing. It's obvious. The obvious question that people are going, hey, Mac, do you think your special forces background helped you with it? Yeah, right. <laughs> because, because, well, and, and this is the point, because this is what makes this discussion even applicable to the people with no chronic illnesses. Right. Because Mac's ability to do what he did mentally to contend with this was because he has spent a huge part of his life mentally contending with things. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? He didn't wait for the yeah. emergency. Because so when you are the, you know, the, the fat, flaccid, gelatinous mm-hmm. button pushers that you button often pusher. describe. Right. Yep. When you don't put yourself through anything, when you're not working out, when you're not disciplined, when you're not preparing yourself for a crisis that you may or may not ever come, then you're not going to have the strength to deal with it when it does come. That's why I always say, right, your best defense is a stronger you. We can't do enough podcasts or Matt can't write enough books or whatever to address every single person's crisis, whether it's emotional, relational, financial, physical, mental, whatever it is, right? There's, you, you, there's just not enough because everybody's situation, no matter whether it's cancer or broken or a divorce, it's still individual. It's still specific. But the one cure-all for everything is that your best defense is a stronger you because a stronger right. you can deal with anything. That's right. So yep. that's why this is important. This came on Mac out of nowhere. It was like lightning from the sky. It was a storm. And, and that's that how it does it. And that's well, that's go. that's typical. It's typical for PMR. You know, that's the other thing that when I looked it up, it comes out of nowhere. Yep. I went, damn. It was <laughs> it was like verbatim all the crap that I had. It, now I, I've only met two other people with it, and when we did a, a comparison, you know, they said, Oh, well, you definitely sound like you have it worse than I do. I, they said mine sucks, but I wasn't, right. they weren't incapacitated. So, uh, 
yeah, I don't know why it was so bad, but um, yeah. Eh, well, whatever. it's like you know, it it's there. if if somebody were to jump you, right? Mm-hmm. on the street yep. or something like oh, that. Oh, shit. Okay. No, no, no. no <laughs> let's just say that you have no PMR. I'm just saying that if somebody right. oh, were yeah, to yeah. jump you or something break in your house right. or whatever, that's a surprise, mm-hmm. right? That came out yep. of nowhere. Right. But the likelihood that that individual is going to prevail against you, his, the odds are not good. Why? Right. Because you were right. Because you were ready for the surprise at the moment? No. <laughs> Because right. of the preparation from before, beforehand, right? right? Mm-hmm. You were always preparing for such things. And that's why this is applicable for everybody, even if you don't have a chronic illness. Right. Before Absolutely. something like that comes on, before b- b- before she leaves you, man, you know, before mm-hmm. that wife leaves you, before that kid breaks your heart or dies in a car accident or the, the worst of the worst things happen to you, physically, mentally, relationally, financially, I don't care, job, before these things happen for you, change your life, man. You know, mm-hmm. make your personal development become a powerhouse now. Do whatever you have to do now to start. And it's going to be a different fit for everybody. So good. Right. Yeah. And arm yourself. Yeah. Right. Mentally. Yep. Yep. For those on audio, he's no, really. pointing at his yep. head. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's just another way of saying, I love your saying, you know, your best defense is a stronger you. You mm-hmm. got to arm yourself, man. Yep. You know, you got to get, yep. Start building that mind. And, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean that's it, 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 that is that is key to freaking success in everything, you know. Ar- arm yourself mentally. Yeah, yeah, I love that shit, man. Well, you, we used to always. Yeah, what did you always say to me? You know, dude, I got to be a little tired, a little cold, a little hungry, a little cold, a little, little scared, a little scared. <laughs> yep. Right. Yep. So you 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 yep. you've made a a life out of becoming uncomfortable. You know, you you live with the awareness that you live in a comfortable world and your life is blessed and and you know you could you could do a lot more in terms of luxury if you wanted to but you choose to be uncomfortable daily whether it's attacking your chores or the workouts yep. or going to the bob whatever it is you make it's, yourself it's paid it's paid off in this case you know in this sense it's paid off yeah yeah but I, but I but I, I I need I need to repeat that because people need to know that I I'm I'm, I'm grateful that I had this, yeah. uh, because it really makes you appreciate the days you feel good and so many people don't have ailments and they take they take for granted the fact that their body feels good and they yeah. don't take advantage of that yeah. you know yeah. oh my god man no I've, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've I've heard it, you know, you know, Lizzie and Lizzie's that's, this is her life. Her life is chronic nightmare. And, but she still has energy. She still has that, that energetic spirit. She's a lot like you in that way. And, but I, you know, I always, we, we, we talk about, well, what, what if those things weren't there? And it's just, Mm -hmm. she would, she would tear the world up. Right. She would tear the world up. She would do everything that we would we take for granted she would throw herself headlong into it it would be unbridled enthusiasm yeah absolutely yeah absolutely so it's good to hear from people who've who've contended with that and and pushed through it because it's still there you know mm-hmm. it's still there yep but yeah and i, I think i'll just live it this will probably be my life now i would imagine you know uh but i i, I don't i don't care anymore <laughs> Isn't it amazing how that reticular activating system, right, where you become not comfortable with the pain, but you're at home with it. You know, it's just it's like your 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 drug abusing brother. He's just he's always going to be there. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. (laughs) Always there. He's always there. Yeah. So right now, what people say, you know, how does it, what does it feel like right now? You know, it's a constant ache, but then it's the um, it's the body ache too. Like when you have a bad flu, you know, Mm -hmm. you have that body ache all over. That's how I feel all the time now. But the thing is, I, I I felt so bad for so long, incapacitating bad, yeah. that this is good. <laughs> this is my this is my yeah. new normal. I'm okay right. with it. This bad I'm is good because when when you can't open or close your hands, you can't uh, you have all these pills, but you can't unscrew a pill bottle. You can't do it. There's no freaking way you can unscrew or or open a bottle of water. Um, the simplest things, you know, just went away. Um, you know, pickets and, 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 and man, talk about a kick to the freaking nuts when it comes to, uh, ego. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I'm, you know, I'm Rebecca's tough guy, man. I'm, sure. I'm a lot of people's tough guy. And yeah. I was faking it. Thankfully, nobody did freaking attack me or mug me or anything. You know, yeah. like <laughs> at time, it was really bad because, bro. Oh, yeah. So, you know, faking it, walking around, you know, with good posture and stuff. <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. <laughs> We're like you, you, you call that posture, bro? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so this was a good time to do it. It needed to be done, and I'm thinking that we could help some people out. If nothing else, I gave them a few more things to think about. You know, yes. as far as curing, especially like the cold shower after infrared sauna. Infrared saunas aren't very expensive. I, I, there's not people are going to ask me to recommend them a brand. You know, if I get a personal note from somebody I know, I will tell them the brand that I have. Right. Um, but I don't know. Just find one that's rated well. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you have that. Because the other thing is a lot of people mentioned heavy metals. You know, oh, it could be heavy metals. Yes, I, I retired from 22 years of special ops. I know I have a lot. There's a, right. so much heavy metal in my system. Plus, my my blood it, type is heavy metal, by the way. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, uh, but the IR sauna helps with that as well. Yeah. You know, the, the heavy metals. So, um, so, it's, you know, you got to clean, you got to clean your diet up. You've got to stay active as much as it freaking hurts. Yeah. You've yeah. got to stay active. Uh, even that, that means just going for a walk, man, get off your freaking ass. And, and, uh, and I empathize now with people who have this kind of stuff because, um, I know that every ounce of your being says, no, don't do this. I know yeah. this. Every ounce of your being is saying, don't do this. Just sit down. Mm. I mean, it's every freaking ounce, man. It is. It is just. It. It's the demon, man. Just remember, yes. give it your own name. You could yeah. call it your de your demon, but I would challenge you to make it personal. You know, make it personal with that. Uh, uh, but get you know, you don't have to invest in IRSR. There's plenty of places in in cities where they have these new salt spas, and there you could just go and um, you know rent. 30 minutes and uh and then you got to clean up the diet you got to do uh natural anti-inflammatories anti try to get off the prescription meds because they're just poison they're just masking what's there you know they're not really helping you um yeah i mean i i gave you what i think is uh helping me but the biggest one overall is that I just didn't, I did not capitulate. I just kept working out. Dude, that's moved. the key. That that's the key that because the people can either capitulate to it or, or mm -hmm. in trying to diagnose and trying to do the research and trying, you know, everybody, there's a next remedy here, another remedy, try this, try that. Yep. The discouragement right. of, you know, getting to the place you're like, I don't even want to help myself. You know, yeah man that was that was bad and i i regret saying that but it was just one of the i wanted rebecca to understand how i felt at the moment you know but i i regret uh but it was how i felt at the moment i was like i feel so bad i don't even want to help myself and i saw her i saw her become drained when i said that just drained and i was like Oh my God, I got a freaking, I got, nope. <laughs> I'm going to keep on moving, keep yeah. on tracking. Oh, that's another thing. Speaking of unsolicited comments. <sighs> hey, you know, it could be Lyme disease. You might have to get your blood work done or this kind of thing. Oh man. You yeah. know how much blood work I've had done? <laughs> Every time I went to the doc, I think when they sent me back my, my, uh, uh, whatever blood test results, mm -hmm. Like 14 different tests every time. Every time. Mm. It was a lot of blood, a lot of blood tests. Alec, I started grounding probably about a year ago. Yeah, Rebecca put me on that. And I was like, what, what? this makes freaking sense. I just, I feel better immediately, if nothing more than just bare feet on the ground, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just body earth connections. That vibe, I mean, bro. There's energy. Right, like, there's energy vibe, moving, yes. dude. It's the vibe. Yeah, man, that's good. That we, that was fun. I'm so glad we did that. I'm yeah. so freaking glad we did that. It's it's been, it, this is the right time. Yeah, you know, because I I am pretty sure that I am not going. Um, it's not going to be a recurring theme as far as being miserable again. 
And if it if if it is for whatever reason, I know I'm gonna jack it up again. Yeah. I know I'm gonna freaking destroy it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to bring in the armada and I'm going to lay down some freaking head. I'm going to drop the freaking gravity on this shit, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. bring it, bring it because I'm getting my strength back now, man. You ready for another freaking <laughs> fight? I'm ready now because I'm already, I'm already programmed up here. How to yeah, fight th that's the thing. So if it comes back hard, if it comes back hard again, um, all right. All right. What, what you got? <laughs> You've already tasted I mean, the you darkness, had me bro. Not moving, you yeah. know, <laughs> You have already tasted yep. the darkness, man. Yep. <laughs> and I'm the thing is, you've seen it. You've been around me. You've lived mm -hmm. this with me. You've you've heard me piss because there's only three people I could piss and moan to, <laughs> and Rebecca wasn't one of them because I don't want to piss. And so it was like, well, I could piss and moan to you. There's only a few people that I could say, oh my god. Yeah, and I, I did not withhold from teasing from, or jo yeah. joking with him. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, yep. There was a lot. Of, I, I know, wanted to. I wanted Joe to put it in the a lot interview. Of gay comments in there. I wanted Joe to put it in the interview because. Oh yeah, it was the one where it's like, all right, Mac, have you tried everything? Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. All right. So this has to be in there. So you know, when people say, "Have you tried everything?" and I would say, "Yeah, man, I, I am. I I got to the point right of desperation. Once again, desperation provides fertile ground for desperate measures. You will tr when you're desperate." You might try freaking anything. Um, <laughs> and I remember just, it was just, a, a, you know, a cacophony of events where it just, it, I, I, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't uh, move my hands. And it just went on and on. Mm. And then I'm trying everything. And I forget who it was. I said, I said, dude, I would try anything, right? It wasn't you, right? It was somebody else. No, it was you it and I. You, we, was we, it we, you we, that said that? Yeah, where I, I actually got it on the right. I got it. Oh, really? I was yeah, where I said, I will try anything at this point. And you said, what about going gay? <laughs> but the thing is, I went like this. I went, you know, if it were 100% <laughs> cure. cure, I'm my for a day. No, I, I, will, I would go gay for a day. <laughs> <laughs> go gay for a day. I got that video. We'll Not that, that there's anything me. wrong with that. <laughs> So what happens if you go to this alternative medical doctor and just all you find out is he's gay and that's what he meant by being alternative? <laughs> then if it makes me feel better, <laughs> I'm all about it. I could be temporarily gay. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, doc. I mean, if you say it's going to make me feel better, then Whatever let's I'll assume the get position. to work, I guess. <laughs> uh. All right. Yeah. That's All where right. I'm at. That's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, so we're, 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 we're trying everything, ladies and gentlemen. We're yeah. trying everything. It's just that I would go gay for a day. Uh, you know, I would have gone gay for a day. Bro. That's, <laughs> but the thing is, you, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just to make the point, right? Yep, um, just to make the point, man. Well, 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 well there was the, there was the, to me, the best line was the <laughs> when I, when we, this was, because this is, was early on, um, it was during the squad meetup, so you'd only had this stuff not for very long, and we did the interview Joe did with us in in the clubhouse, mm -hmm. and I, I was going to talk to you about the condition, and yep. so I started off the conversation by saying, oh, right, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, Mac, you have this condition called PMR. Now, besides crying like a little girl, what are some of your other right. symptoms? Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Besides crying like a little girl. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, the thing is, I need that though, man. But that's what yeah. that's what friends are for, you know. Yeah. To not, not to, not, not to, not to yeah. uh, uh, console you and say, "Oh, you'll be better." <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, 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 dude, that was the, that would. That's why I was so grateful that Rebecca didn't do that. Yeah. I was so grateful because I think that would have been the worst thing. I know she wanted to. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know she wanted to, but she did not. <laughs> Very grateful for the fact that. She did. Well, and 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 then see what I think people should do now is now that you hear this, what I recommend everybody listen to this squad podcast whatever, go to Max's YouTube channel, and watch the video of him burning the tribute. Oh right now, yes, because that now. will have so much more meaning for you mm -hmm. when you yeah. understand. Because it was during I, I can't believe we didn't talk about that. Yeah, it was during this that okay. We'll go back and talk about that because right. 
Yeah, you could slip it in. Cause, yeah, because you decided that yep. I'll, I'll tell, I'll, I'll you're going to build a trebuchet. Yep. Well, so I, I'm, I am very grateful that people didn't, you know, my people close to me didn't feel sorry for me. Like my kids, they're at an age where they're not going to feel sorry for me. They just think that I'm invincible. And Rebecca wasn't feeling sorry for me. She was very upset about it. But one night I was talking to my kid. Um, about building stuff and i had no energy to do anything um nothing at all but 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 when it was at its worst when i was incapacitated when stuff wouldn't move the cure was to get moving you know get moving but besides working out i needed bigger activities i needed to build something you know something yeah. that would motivate me but one night i was talking to my kid about uh like siege weapons i don't know why it was just that night and i said you know what uh one of my favorites is, is a trebuchet and he goes oh yeah 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 it's like a catapult i said yeah but it's this and that and i'm, I'm a, and, and i said it'd be cool to build a trebuchet and um he said oh my god that would be the best and then i started thinking about it i said that would keep me busy mm. building the trebuchet so i so I, I i i priced it you know with lumber and i went holy shit man <laughs> it's too expensive that's expensive as hell but the thing is i just bought a chunk of land across the street from me you know yeah. at the time and um, I've got all these young pines on it. And I got a wild hair up my ass. I said, this is going to keep me moving. This is an activity that's going to keep me moving and help me forget about that I'm just in agonizing pain. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I just went to work on it the next day. I went immediate, to, Im immediate action. I wrote it on the whiteboard. Build a trebuchet. How do you build one? I don't know. <laughs> but I, and I planned it out all myself. I drew it up on the board, you know, uh, whiteboard, and I went down. I live on a, a decommissioned golf course, and I went down onto the middle of the golf course. Nobody uses it. I take care of it. I, I maintain the trail and everything, and I mapped it out. I saw it in my head, and then I started cutting down trees, mm -hmm. and then I started dragging it with my golf cart. Just I, 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 no plan yet, right? Because sometimes action without a plan is better than a plan with no action. Sure. So right now, I just went into action. Let me cut down these trees and just bring over timber, timber, yeah. timber, timber. Just started bringing it over. And they were all very, very uniform. And I loved how uniform these young pines right. were. Uh, cut out, and, I, I, uh, and then I started mapping it out on the whiteboard. Right, I wanted this long. Um, and uh, this is basically the premise of it, Hama Hama. And I started building this thing. And I had to go to the hardware store and, you know, get. Uh, hardware for it and we did that little bit on uh, mm -hmm. uh the mini vlogs remember yeah. with larry from yeah. ace hardware mm -hmm. uh re rest in peace rest larry in peace, yeah. uh, and he said what are you doing now crazy man i said i'm mm. building a trebuchet <laughs> He's dude like, at that point when we did that when we did that video i felt so bad yeah so much pain in my body yeah. you could even see me limping in that video mm -hmm. yep. you know there was there was a very noticeable limp in that vehicle yeah. um <clears throat> And it took me, it took me a few weeks, you know, but every day I'd go down and I'd erase some of the whiteboard. I'd draw it back up and man, I built a functioning trebuchet. I was a first time go, first time go. So it was very symbolic building that trebuchet was very, very symbolic, Yes, you know, cause it was a symbol of me feeling like shit and trying to, uh, trying to overcome it, trying to beat this thing, yeah. trying to kick its freaking ass. So when we did the video, was that in December? I think it was. It was cold weather. I remember it, that, yeah. Yep. So yeah. it was when I was coming out of it, when I started beating it on my yeah. own. Um, that's when we we destroyed a siege weapon with a siege weapon. That's when I hit it with the flaming arrow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Boom. That was cool. Yeah, so go back to the YouTube channel, Max YouTube channel, and um, check out the burning of the trebuchet because it was – it was very, it was a very emotional thing, and it was Rebecca's suggestion, right? Yep. And she wrote the, uh, yes, she wrote the letter. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Dude, that freaking letter. She was see that that letter right there. See that? Mm -hmm. That's how emotional she was about it. Yeah. God dang, man. She is not a um, a mouthy lady. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? She's very right. careful with yep. her speech. And, mm -hmm. you know, she was not down there talkative or anything. Right. She was extremely somber. 
somber. Um, Bingo. And this this meant a lot for her. Yep. Because she loves you, man. Yep. I mean. Yep. Passionately. Yep. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. So it yeah. was. It's I'm, I'm, I'm glad we, my son and I, could be there, you know, and and yep. and capture that, you know, as, as and Joe did a good job of, you know, where the thing just goes yeah, up. And, awesome, man. Dude. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's great to have that yep. as a memory. You know what I mean? It was. It was almost like you know, I was, I was, I was burning my freaking demon. You know. Yeah. There you go, bro. Take that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm. Cool. Awesome, man. Whew, dude, man, I am emotionally drained. I did not, I, I was not, I was looking forward to doing this, but I wasn't at the same time. I don't want, I don't want to, uh, you know, because uh, I, the, the, it was hard being a burden on others. Yeah. You know, my family, my wife, people who were counting on me, it, being a burden on them really sucked. Cause I, you know, I, I can't be a burden on him until I'm like 90. <laughs> you know? That's just 10 years away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, it's, it's, you've, you've been an inspiration to everyone. Um, and you know, I mean, I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, I, I said, I understand all the respect that everyone has for Mac. And I said, but you know, I'm close to him. And let me tell you something. It's better up close, and honestly, is right on because yeah, yeah, you know yeah. you you have set the standard, bro. And just every, things that I talk about in theory, <laughs> you, yep, you're walking a mountain shoe leather. You know what I mean, right? And uh, it's a great confirmation for the information. I'm like, whew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that stuff works. But you know, to see somebody, um, because I, you know, and and like with Lizzie, there's times where you forget that that other person is in that situation because there's nothing you can visibly see you know, until you get up and wince i don't know so you're just talking right. to me so and not realizing that at that moment you're very much in pain you know mm-hmm. and yes, so right. I, I was still throwing demands on hey we need to do this and we need to create right, this right. and we need to, <laughs> i'm coming out man yep. we're going to do and you would do, oh, <laughs> you would do yep. it oh crap you would do it you know i mean you know you yep. you were i mean you you voice thing but i mean it was i mean trust me guys trust me Matt complaining is is you can't even call it that you know yeah. it's just you know, but but you just saw a lack of enthusiasm. Yeah, I just saw. Yeah, it was just uh, it was just like yeah, sure. it just was like a. a yeah, good. We do that. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like it's like if you turn down the gain, it's like max right. like negative point five decibels. Right. <laughs> it's like turning it down. You know. Um, so, but it, but but I watched you do that. And yep. I watched you be patient with people. I watched you. Um, oh, cool! You know what I mean. Right I, I just because I, because yep. we went to the we would go to the pub, mm-hmm. right? And I and you were in this condition, and I knew you know that it, when I somebody would be sitting there with us might be a little bit annoying or whatever. You know, I mean, if you had to, you would get up and just <laughs> walk away, right? Yep. But you know, n- there was never you really there was so much effort putting into not portraying this not getting attention for it not burdening as you said everybody else with it Mm -hmm. using it as a crutch you know obviously but there was none of that and that takes strength itself yeah because there is a relief in the voicing there's a relief of the you know in the the exclamations and letting out you know the grunts and the groans and all these things all the time Um, Mm -hmm. but you know you there was so much of that that you actually sucked up and you know i think it's just a testimony to to that strength and it means a lot for you to say that you know you don't regret this because yeah no um, i i i i i'm i'm it, it's it's it sucks to say it, but i'm like grateful that i that i've got it i mean because damn it it's 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 amazing how grateful you could be for feeling good you know yeah. when you feel just like shit for so yeah. freaking long um so yeah i'm i'm like i'm i'm ecstatic i'm I, i'm glad that right now i just feel bad yeah <laughs> i'm so glad, I'm so glad. <laughs> i think there's yeah i feel so good because i just feel bad um, right I, I i think i think there's a a there's a real power here. there's a spiritual power if you will because of that gratitude yeah 
there's real spiritual it opens you up dude to so much opportunity and power and just i don't know just more apostolic mantle more magic happening more good things more good connections because you are sending out such a strong vibe with dude you know what we've said it before it's 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 um uh, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I could help other people be better people. Yeah. So this is one thing that is going to help people. This is just another thing that is going to help people. We just had to wait for the right time because I couldn't do it when I felt like absolute shit because so it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we did this and yeah, man, I'm ready for the correspondence, man. And you know, <laughs> well, you uh, know but I think I answered all the questions too, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, uh, like I said, when when I posted the video the other day, yep. and I saw, and you hit me up and said, "Dude, this is getting traction." Traction. I turned to Joe and I said, "I have to do this. I have to do this as a podcast because I'm not going to let somebody else right. jump in here. Everybody else is going to. They're yep. going to want to talk. Hey, to I've you. already been hit up. Yep. Yeah. So, up. um, in order for it, in order for everything to come across, where it's not just you telling a war story mm -hmm. you know what i mean or something yep. about your time in berlin or something like that mm -hmm. it you know it has to be communicated to it has to be communicated to me yep right because it's not yeah. like the infra i'm I, you know that i know already so much yeah of this, yeah, yeah 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 but yeah. it's just it just you know it's just where you're not you know it's you're testifying i guess it's not just describing yeah, right. something you're testifying you know, and I think it would it would provide the most. Um, no, nah, it had to be. It had to be yeah. with you. It had to be, hundred <clears throat> percent. Well, you know, you know, you know. You, I mean, we've been we've been hanging now for six, seven years. So yeah. you know, and you you, we know we know each other pretty well. You know, it so, just it just yeah. it'll bring out it bring. I just the end. It's not a. It's I want people to really get the essence of how you contended with this. Mm -hmm. And not that people aren't smart enough to glean certain things, but that's why I'm going to ask questions like I do only yes. because I know what you were going through. And I'm still as an, as an outsider saying mm -hmm. how, you know, right. and, and then, you know, we'll make observations because we're both practitioners of self-improvement. So we both embrace these sort of, you know, principles of, of personal <clears throat> transformation and all these sorts of things. Um, and I think everybody will will be will benefit from it because in this personal interaction, again, I just think it brings out a little bit more. So I wanted to make sure that got down on record first. Yep. You know, before you know, you start having to tell the same things, you know, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I, th I really, really want people to get a lot of this because, as we said a few times here, this is not a bitch fest. This is not. Matt could have gone right. on. For the rest of his life. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Never said anything <laughs> yeah. to anybody. Right. Nobody would ever yep. know. Yeah. You know, but uh, I think, like you said, you you you're finally out of place. Mm -hmm. You know, and that probably consists of several things coming into place, not just how you feel, but kind of where things are, and you feel like y you're looking at it differently. Even okay, this is this is now something I'm ready to to use to impact other people, and that's that's central to your mission in life now, bro absolutely yeah man thank you for uh you know recommending that we do this and yeah, uh i was ready for it appreciate the squad members being here listen to all this stuff sorry i didn't answer all your questions but you know we were in the we were in the uh we were in a rhythm man yeah had the rhythm going 